We're closing in here on the start of the 2022 Husker football season. Hi, Sean Callahan with Husker Online here today with ABM as uh, we're continuing our in-depth look of the Husker football team, talking defense today. Uh, we got members of the secondary here joining us. Uh, we've got a couple of veterans that have been on the field a lot for Nebraska. Miles mm -hmm. Farmer, Quint Newsom. We've got newcomer Tommy Hill from Arizona State and Marquise Buford. Uh, guys, welcome. But looking forward to talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, guys, uh, you look at the defense and kind of want to go to all four of you guys on this. Um, but you look at the defense, Miles. Um, mm -hmm. The secondary lost a lot, but there's still a good core of you that played mm -hmm. some pretty meaningful football the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, just, what do you like about the makeup of this group and then the new pieces you've added in the offseason? Um, we lost, like you said, we lost a lot, but we also gained a lot of new players that can also play. So. I mean, I like how, how the secondary look right now. I like my room. I like the guys I'm with. Uh, I can't wait to play with them. Yeah, and Quinn, you, you stepped into that role last year as a starter and, and kind of, you know, really came on as the year went on. Mm -hmm. um, just what, what do you like about this group right now and, and kind of the role you've established? Uh, I would say that I like how, well, we had a lot of vets leave, so I like how we got young guys who hungry and ready to play. Um, everybody trying to work toward a starting position and that's just building the competition in our room and um yeah that's what i would say you talk about competition one of the guys that's brought some of that competition joining us here tommy hill from arizona state orlando florida native uh tommy just how have you been able to fit in to this room as the new guy and obviously you've taken a lot of reps with the, with the top defense already um it just felt it didn't feel new because I've been there before, uh, just been in a competitive mindset, um, just learning new things from Q, uh, just helped me build more and just ready to build off this season. And Marquise, you were one of a few freshmen last year that did not redshirt, um, played on all the key special teams units, got some snaps with the defense. Um, how ready are you now to kind of make that next step and, and, and be one of those core guys in the secondary? Um, I'm excited to be able to, you know, fill in a role in the defense and get to, you know, show what I can bring and show how I can help push my teammates to the best of their ability as well. So I'm excited for this season to be able to step in as, with a, a key role. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mark Hill, the speed graduated, Kyron Williams graduated, they're six-year seniors. Um, Cam Taylor broke one pro, Miles. I mean, when you look at just that type of turnover, mentally, were you preparing kind of as the year went on, like, man, like we're going to have to take over now with, with these guys moving on? Um, I think we've been preparing that, preparing for that since we got here. So, you know, them guys just helped us. Like they brought us along. They taught us new stuff. There's just like a second, third coaches on the field. That's one of the bros, you know. So, yeah, I feel like we're ready. Yeah, Quinn, are you ready to kind of step into one of those leadership roles now? Yes, yeah, sir, for sure. I would say that uh, we've already been working on that. Uh, I know that last year we didn't really have to do that because we did have all them six years and stuff. But like leading into this season during the during the spring and all that, we, that's something we've really been working on. And Tommy, for you stepping in as a, one of the 15 transfers that Nebraska's had, how do you come in and, and try to lead, but you know, go about it in, in a way a newcomer is going to go about it? Uh, I'm still new, so I still follow uh, the footsteps of the leaders we have now. Uh, but if it's time to step in, I have. Uh, I speak on it, but until then, I let them lead and I follow. And Marquise, you're a young guy, but I don't think the coaches look at you like that. I mean, from when you talk to the coaches, I think they, they expect a lot out of you. I mean, how have you been able to kind of step up pretty quickly as a young guy in this program? Uh, definitely just by trying to hold, first off, myself accountable for everything I'm doing and make sure that I'm always on point with handling my business first and then holding my teammates accountable as well. Like not letting anybody, not cutting anyone any slack or room for like failure. We want everything to be great around here. So we're not accepting anything else but greatness. Quentin um, and Miles, when you look at this, this secondary overall, what are the missing pieces? When you look at the spring and kind of where it was at and, and kind of what you know today, what needs to be done right now? Um, just bonding, just playing with each other more. And that's what we're doing this summer. We're just working on learning the defense all over again with the people that don't know it and grooming them to be able to operate how we need to operate. Yeah, I would, I would say that uh, all of the new guys we got, they physically, uh, 
they're ready for the Big Ten. I, I would think it's just more of a mental part, just learning the playbook and just kind of like growing up and knowing where to be at the right times. That's something we uh really been building on. How about you guys? When you look at it now, Tommy, what, what do you think is missing and kind of what needs to get done now until the start of the season? Uh, I can't really say nothing about that because it's only spring. I've only been here for a spring, so uh, we just work on it. So to work on the plays with me, that's probably it, so. Yeah, I'd probably say playbook, you know, making sure everybody is comfortable enough to, if they have to come in the game at some point in time, to be out and go and orchestrate it how anybody that started the game orchestrated it. So I'd say just getting everybody mentally prepared for the season and, you know, mature enough to handle what we're about to go into. I want to talk about Travis Fisher. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I look at the history of Nebraska secondary coaches, and before Travis Fisher, they were turning out secondary coaches every year or two. Um, you know, and they had some really good guys here, but they just kept turning over and turning over. Fisher's been here now. This will be his fifth year, which mm -hmm. there hasn't been a secondary coach here that long in over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, just the stability he's brought, the continuity he's brought. Um, what has Fisher meant just to your room, Miles? And Coach Fish is the room. Coach Fish is a, was a DB in himself. He's still a DB at heart in his mind. So he just really giving us game to help us with our career. And he he's a great dude on and off the field. So Coach Fish is the room, to be honest. How about you, Quinn? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, Coach Fish always sets the tone. Uh, whether it's with new guys or people who've been on, he sets the tone for the room. So, I mean, if you're not a dog, then it's kind of like he kind of don't want you in there. like so. He going out and getting all these dogs. He building his room how he wants it. And um, I would say that Fish, he he been teaching us a lot of stuff, especially since we've been here. Uh, and it, it's good to know that you have somebody like that who actually cares about uh, what, what's gonna take you to the next level and he just keeps on building on us. Mm -hmm. Tommy, what have you seen from Travis Fisher? I know you've been in another Division One program. How is he different uh, maybe than what you, you've had before? Um. It, it was a it was a lot different, but they were both keeping my head on straight, uh, just making me become a better man. Um, just having the best personality and just meeting a person uh, and just sticking to it. So uh, he's a good man, and I just love to be with him. How about you, Marquise? Uh, I got to agree with everything they said. He's probably the one of the best coaches I've been around in my lifetime. And, you know, he, he has the same expectations from the guys that are walk-ons and the guys that are on, are on like scholarships that's gonna be playing. Like he expects everybody to carry themselves and hand, handle their business the right way. So I say just having our backs and making sure that like, we always a step ahead of the curve is the biggest thing he do. I'm curious, have you guys seen any footage of him as a player? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does, he yeah, up, does he pull out the cut up tape and show you guys? We we we, we be seeing it every now and then. Yeah, but he don't really pull it up like that. But. Yeah. But yeah, we don't see his on the field. You pull up the Wikipedia page and look at his uh, NFL profile. Yeah, we we don't see yeah, we we don't see all that, yeah. Without yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah, we don't yeah. see all that. We we go to his house, we don't see his game balls, jerseys he got, stuff like that. What I mean, when you have a guy that has been where you all want to be, how much easier is it to pay attention to a coach like that? It makes it way easier. It's like, it's like, man, he done did this. He done did everything we trying to do. But why then, not listen to him? Why not? For, and, at mm -hmm. that, and then it's like, t for 10 years too, it's not like he was just there. Like, this man started in the NFL, he played 10 years. That's that's something hard to do in the NFL. Too, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So, I mean, he was the state champ in Florida too in the 100 meter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Move the football compact. Yeah. Move yeah, that, that, that man was bad sure. right there. Is he good for a few reps anymore? Have you ever got he, out there? He, he, he'll, he'll walk. He'll walk through a drill. He'll show us a drill. He'll walk through it real quick. Act like he still got Short it. Short yardage goal line right there. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No big. Yeah. Nah. Well, guys, Cam Taylor Britt was a big corner that left in second round draft pick. Mm -hmm. um, how do you go about replacing that um, just with what he brought? I mean, just, just I would say just keeping the energy that he brought to us. Um, and I mean, I, I would say that because 
Cam showed me a lot at corner. Uh, these boys play safety, and he wasn't here yet. But Cam, Cam showed me a lot, just like Decap did, and they showed me how to go about business, how to have fun at certain times, like just things like that, and um, and just 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 keeping the aggressive part of the DBs in there, because yeah. you know he always brought that dog to to our secondary, and um, I, I would say that's something we definitely need to keep up. What, what about you? Just as uh, me, just from Cam, I learned just like personality, like interacting with the fans, just being being a good guy all around, on and off the field. That's really what I got from Cam. And Marquise, you were with Cam just one year, so what yeah. what did you learn just watching him from a distance? Uh, shoot, I wouldn't even say from a distance. I I live with him, so. Oh, you live with him. Yeah, so just seeing him work every day, you know, regardless of. You know what was going on in the house, what he had going on outside of football. He always went. When we got in the stadium, it was time to work, and I kind of that's really where I kind of picked up on that pretty quickly from him. Like, I no matter what I got going on outside of the stadium, when I'm in here, it's time to work. So that was probably the biggest thing I took away from him. I want to speak to the the dynamics of your room now. I want to say eight new guys joined your room total. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot. I mean, yeah, that's a lot. Of I mean. think if you like looked over every secondary in the country, I don't know if there's anyone else. Who'd be like, we got eight new guys coming in. Uh -huh. I mean, what was that like? Um, with just so many new faces coming in. I mean, did you have to like learn everyone's names? I mean, did it take a like? How, how did how did the meshing go? Boys got personality. I was, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it happened right. quick. It wasn't yeah, even. It, it, wasn't even like, it's like, it wasn't even like here's a new set of DBs. Like get to know them. It's like okay, and need the, my brothers now. Exactly. Like and the thing about it, like most of them boys from the south. We all from basically the from the south, so it's like we all the same. Yeah. So Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, mm -hmm. you all kind of like feel like. You're the same at Nebraska, like all Southern boys. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. We all out here for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Georgia guys in general, like it, it feels like Georgia guys fit well at Nebraska. Why is that? Uh, I mean, it's two different aspects from that. So like, cause he's from like Hinesville, Georgia. That's like down south, and I'm from Atlanta. That's like the city. So Country it's like Georgia versus the city. city. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. But the city is just busy. That's really why I came out here. I was trying to get away from Mike. Uh -huh. It's just busy in the city. It's calm out here. I'm gonna focus on what I need to do. Well, Marquise, you were you've been all over. I and mean, you lived in Connecticut. Yeah. You lived in uh, Chicago <laughs> and Texas, right? Yeah. Uh, Texas. Am I forgetting anywhere else? Nah, you got it. So you, I mean, you've learned how to adapt to every kind of person. Nah, for sure. It's definitely. It was. I don't know. Once I came on my visit and seen everything, it was that Nebraska had to offer, it was kind of a no-brainer for me, like, as far as, like, what I want from a football aspect and from a school aspect, like, people in academics stay on our bus and our coaches stay on our bus. There's no in-between or more sided on football or anything like that, so, and then the fans on top of that made it really pretty much easy. They, that's all I see is Nebraska people DMing me, Nebraska people liking my pictures, commenting on my pictures. So it's like, you see Nebraska all the time, you might as well just, you know that's where they're gonna love you the most, so. Well, and Tommy, you went from Orlando to Arizona State or Tempe and to Nebraska. So you also kind of dealt with a lot of different types of people. I mean, what's it been like for you kind of adjusting to Nebraska compared to Tempe, compared to Orlando? Uh, it wasn't a big adjustment. Uh, humans is humans, so people is people. So I don't look at people uh, differently. So I adapt people quickly. So I love everybody the same. Have you adjusted to the food in Nebraska? Is it different than what you guys are used to? Yeah. It's, it's very different. It's very different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's different. We, we find our couple little spots though, yeah. little spots we hit. What's the thing in Nebraska that you guys like that you had no idea before? Uh, Sushi. Sushi? I ain't I'll never ate out sushi till I got out here. Yeah, I, be, I be hitting that sushi, man. I ain't Are you eating like raw fish sushi? Like nah, fried. Fried. Fry. Fry. Gotta fry. You feel me? I need it. Yeah, fried sushi <laughs> with the spicy meal, ill sauce, yeah. all that. All that. Y'all ain't had sushi before y'all came here? I mean, I had it, but I eat it on the regular. Nah, you feel me? Like, I, I get sushi about two times a week. Nah. There's probably not much sushi in country Georgia, I'm guessing. Nah, I don't think so. Nah, it ain't. Tommy, you a big sushi guy too? No. 
And he ain't had the right one. That's what it is. I used to be just like that. You need a fried one, twin, with the with the with the crab in there, twin. Have you tried a runza? Nah, nah, I tried nah. it. I, like, I tried it. It was just like, it was weird, really. I don't, ain't, what's in there? Hamburger, cabbage. Yeah, it's just the hamburger closed yeah. up, twin. It's like a hot pocket, yeah, bro. It's like, a it's like a hot pocket, twin. Like, I don't want the runs. I, runs are cool, though. Runs are something you just grab. Like, yeah. Hamburger, Nebraska, too. Hamburger pizza. Like, that's a probably something you only see in Nebraska, too. If you guys. Do you eat hamburger pizza? No. Nah. <laughs> You're like, no way. Nah. Sausage. Yeah, Sausage. Yeah. Well, guys, let, let's talk about the season. Um, you guys open up here very soon. Uh, you go overseas to Ireland. Mm -hmm. First of all, are you guys excited to, to go overseas? I mean, like, speak as a group on just the opportunity you have to go overseas and play this game. That's like one in a lifetime experience, man. Right. We're going to play football we in know, Ireland. Yeah, we ain't. We're going to go crazy. And it's still going to be on national TV. So yeah, it's like. Yeah. I think it's gonna be a great experience overall. Yeah, sure. Especially like with the group of guys we got, being able to like share that experience with them, it's gonna be even better. Like we doing it as a team. It's not like we just taking a trip out there by ourselves. How will you guys do classes? Like, cause you have school work that week too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, no. That's the week before class start. Oh, oh yeah, it is week zero. Week before class start. Oh. I don't know if you had to worry about school work. Yeah. Yeah. I was finna say, and they're gonna see me when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> but, Unavailable for the week. Well, if it was during school, though, mm, probably would have yeah, probably would have kept the work, like did the work the week oh, before yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But nah, they definitely figure something out. Just that game, though, when you look at it, go back to last year. You guys played week zero as well. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be in Ireland, but it was in Champaign, and you guys didn't win that game, and it felt like it really detoured the season at that point. Mm -hmm. When you look at this game. Just how how meaningful is this first game? They're all meaningful, I get that, but particularly a Big Ten game out of the gates. Uh, I believe it's gonna be like a tone setter for the season, you know. But we just gonna play um, one game at a time, really. Like just no voice in the only game we worry about yeah. right now. So we, worry about nobody sure. we put all our focus on that, so we can have the right outcome. Yeah. And then, yeah. What did um, last year kind of when you think about the sting of last year though? Just you know, it could have been the greatest season, but it ended up being one of the worst. I mean, you had you had kind of everything in your hands at one point, and it felt like you lost it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what did you learn from last year, and kind of what were some of the hardest moments of last year? Uh, finish. Yeah. Finishing finish. out everything we do. Like, it was times last year, like, you know, it'll come right down to the wire at the end of the game, and people would just, I wouldn't say, quit but they'll start to fold a little bit and this year we just trying to make sure that whole roster is resilient to everything like we keep the same energy from first quarter to the to the fourth you know like we just got to be we got to be tuned into the game really the whole game it's probably like last year like some folks will probably tune out and just just be there in the moment instead of being in the game you know so that's what that's how I feel about it how about you, Quinn? When you think about last year, what was the hardest game? Like, they are all tough, but was there one or two of those moments you're like, man, I still think about that that game or that moment still today? Honestly, I feel like all the games we lost, we kind of lost the same way. So, And they were all by like three points, six points, this, that. And it's just like every single one of them games I be thinking about to this day. Like, if we would have did this, we would have won. If we would have did this, we would have won. But then again, I try not to think about it too much cause, so we could just keep on building on what we know we had last year, the potential that we have on this team, so. Even like Iowa, I think about that game. It's like, all right, there's no way Iowa can come back. I'm yeah, just like, the yeah. Way they play offense, they're not built to come back. Yeah, Iowa was one of those games. Michigan State was one of those games. Wisconsin. Yeah, it was Wisconsin. Michigan. I mean, it was. Yeah, a lot of teams I would like that for me, to be honest. What game are you looking forward to the most on this year's schedule? I would, uh, yeah, no, Western, yeah. No, Western, no, Western, for sure. Game one. <laughs> yeah, for this sure. Next week, it's North Dakota, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I appreciate all of you taking a chance to sit down. Uh, I know you're in the midst of summer workouts, and everyone's looking forward to the start of the season. Sir, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. All right, well, that wraps it up here with the secondary for Husker Online. I'm Sean Callahan.